Jockey's Ridge State Park near Nags Head is the tallest sand dune in the eastern U.S. What's cooler than that? <laughs> Jockey's Ridge is just one of the unique wonders of the world, and I feel very lucky to be able to work here. Take a walk to the top, it's 85 to 90 feet up, and to the east, you can see the Atlantic pounding the Nags Head shore, and off to the west, the Roanoke Sound. Under your feet, there's a lot of sand, by some estimates, 30 million tons, give or take a few. That's because that sand is not sitting still. Jockey's Ridge is a living dune. It moves with the wind and the seasons. The predominant wind this time of year is gonna be out of the Northeast, so it's gonna be pushing the entire dune back towards the Roanoke Sound. Come the spring, summer, and the early fall, what happens is the wind shifts and it actually pushes the dune back forward. But what's happening is the winds in the winter are slightly stronger than the ones in the summer. They tend to move the dune and migrate it back towards the sound faster than the southwest winds in the wintertime can push the dune towards the front of the beach or ocean front. Some trees will actually grow through the dune and keep growing. Some of them will die in the process, but they also slow down the migration and help the dune from going into the sound so fast. There are hundreds of acres of dunes to traipse across and hike. But if it's summertime, don't think about a barefoot stroll. George Barnes says the sand can be 40 degrees hotter than the air temp. It's measured 140 degrees at times. He has seen visitors running back to their cars to get their shoes after trying to walk across it shoeless. The thing is, if you were to dig down just a few inches, you would find cooler sand. The sand acts kind of like a wick water goes up to the top of the sand. Anywhere you go around here, you can just dig down just a little bit and it's wet. You can take your feet off the sand for a while and just sled down it. And if you don't mind sand in your shirt and pants, roll over and over in it. Or you could try your hand at hang gliding. Handicapped visitors, who are otherwise unable to climb the dunes, can make other arrangements. I think the oldest I've ever part of a 98-year-old person. It's wonderful they can bring, bring them up, they can't come up any other way. Now, I brought up a young kid, eight years old, just had open heart surgery. She was tickled to death. Now, 83, Cliff remembers driving his own car up Jockey's Ridge when he was a teenager, before it was a state park. In the younger days, we used to come up here with cars and park up here. And in the afternoon, the first ridge would be filled full of cars. During World War II, the military was putting Jockey's Ridge to another use. This used to be a target practice bomb range for the Coast Guard. One stop on Cliff's tour is the Sand Castle. It's a remnant from a miniature golf course that operated next to the state park in the 1980s. The owner got tired of digging out from under the ever-shifting sands and sold it to the state. The sand castle serves as a reminder of how changeable this landscape can be. Jockey's Ridge State Park itself might not be here today if it had not been for some Nags Head area residents who banded together in the early 1970s. They were trying to save the dunes from being bulldozed for development. A petition drive worked, and enough land was purchased to dedicate the state park in 1975. Still, development around Jockey's Ridge State Park has taken a toll. The tallest dune ridge, while impressive at 90 feet, is a lot shorter than it was just a few decades ago. Back in the 60s, it was measured at 138 feet. Top of it would be like a ridge top, ridge shape. Development and the vegetation and all growing up around Jockey's Ridge has kind of cut some of the sand supply. Nonetheless, the winds are still pushing the dune southward. To protect homes and a road on the south end from becoming covered, the state has hauled away many truckloads of sand. These days, the state park relies on sand fences and plantings of both live and dead vegetation in order to slow the dunes migration. This one I think was done last we plant American beach grass. Also, we plant dead Christmas trees, basically tie them to the sand fence and pretty quickly it covers the trees and catches the sand. A few miles to the north, we can see a different interplay between wind and sand. 
This is the Mags Head Woods Ecological Preserve. Walk along the many miles of trails here and you might think you're a whole state away in the mountains or Piedmont of North Carolina. Aaron McCall manages the thousand acres for the Nature Conservancy and remembers being surprised the first time he saw this woods on a barrier island, just as visitors are surprised today. I think the way it's tucked away back here when they're generally coming to the Outer Banks are thinking more of spending time in the ocean and the sound and to come here and uh, see these hills, these old relic dunes and having these types of vegetation and American beech trees and trees that are 60 feet high, different species of oaks. I think that's what makes it special and unique and people aren't expecting to see these types of things when they come back here. Over the course of many thousands of years, the sand dunes of Jockey's Ridge State Park to the south and another dune called Run Hill to the north have protected this area in between. Shielded from most of the harsh winds and salt coming off the Atlantic, the trees and other growth thrived. But the dunes aren't only on the edges. They are under the trees and under your feet. We try to let people know that, that when they're walking over these hills, that they're actually walking on relic sand dunes. Between some of those dunes, ponds of freshwater have formed. All of this has helped the Nags Head Woods become home to a biodiverse array of animals and plants, including the rare southern twayblade orchid. Fifty species of birds nest here. Another fifty have been spotted. Humans, too, have claimed this place as home. In the late 1800s, you would have had homesteads back in here, fishing in the sound, uh, having cattle graze through, living off the land. You still have some of the, the old foundations and things left from that homestead. The last person lived here in the 1940s. The Nature Conservancy began acquiring the land 30 years ago. It manages about a thousand acres, some of it on behalf of the towns of Nags Head and Kill Devil Hills. At the north end of the Nags Head Woods, there's an especially high perch where you can watch the coming and going of the sun, as well as the woods. Well, we're on Run Hill, uh, which is managed by Jockey's Ridge State Park. It's a national area. Nags Head Woods is behind us here, and then just to the north would be where the Wright Brothers Monument is. At one point in time was also a big sand dune. Some people describe them as living dunes. They're slowly migrating. This one's migrating to a southwest angle. And as it's rolling over on itself, you know, it's approaching on the forest edge. Uh, some of the trees are now being covered up. You may see some of the shrubs and things sticking their tops up. And so it is that the very dunes that have protected Nags Head Woods all these centuries could, in centuries to come, cover part of it, a grain of sand at a time. In the meantime, the Nags Head Woods Preserve and Jockey's Ridge State Park are there to enjoy, keeping in mind that, as one ranger put it, it is always never the same. <laughs>